Hi everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode is about advanced sight reading. Okay, so um, this episode is dedicated to Matt and Hannah. They've asked me to do something um, a little bit more than what I did in my other sight reading video or videos. I can't remember how many I've posted about it. I think I've done a couple. So I pulled out from my music library. Spine hasn't even been broken on this because we just got this a few weeks ago. And I just wanted the complete set of Haydn sonatas. So this is the Vienna Urtext edition. Um, really good edition. Uh, orange books. Okay, I'm going to literally open to a random page. So, And I'll just flip like this just so you know I'm not cheating. Okay, now I'm going to find... Okay, so this is a little minuet. Dang, and I had to get one with lots of little ornaments. Um, okay, this one. Yeah, this is really not that hard, though. Maybe I'll flip up into something with a little more 16th notes. Um, let's do this finale. This is the, let's see what sonata is. I have no idea. This is sonata number 42, um, Hoboken XVI for 16, uh, number 27, it says 1776. So, um, what I like to do when I'm sight reading, I like to do it hands together, okay? So I don't like to sit and practice hands alone a lot, but I do like to take it in a tempo that's realistic for me at first. If you're a vocal accompanist and you're constantly having to sight read things for vocalists in their lesson, like at sight, then I recommend practicing hands, uh, like full tempo and just practice dropping out notes and then gradually adding more in. But for piano purposes, I think it's more beneficial to not just make a million mistakes and just to rather take uh, a very reasonable tempo. So I'm going to look through the, the piece. I'm just going to read these first two pages, bars 1 through 72, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and I'm going to say, okay, what could I realistically sight read these 16th notes at in bar, I think it's like 30 or something. That's probably a, a pretty safe tempo that I feel okay about. Okay, so let's try it. I think that's, um, sorry, Morden's. actually going really well. Um, this is not that hard of a piece. Um, and one thing that I want to talk about is what I'm doing in my mind when I'm doing these things. So let's just take bar 25, what I was just doing. Okay, what I'm thinking there is I'm not thinking G, D, B, G, D, and I'm not also, yes, at, an, at a certain level I'm reading fourth, sixth, third, fifth, but what I'm doing rather is I'm clumping the notes in my brain into a chord. So I'm just thinking, and this is where uh, theory and a strong theoretical background and knowing all of your triads and inversions, all your seventh chords and inversions will really come into play because you'll instantly recognize G major. Okay, and this, what chord is this? It's a, it's a D7 with an omitted... Um, with the D omitted, or you could say it's an F, an F, dimin F sharp diminished going to G. Now, you don't have to think like that on everything in order to become a good sight reader, but you do want to kind of clump these into at least a chord, even if you can't identify the chord, okay? And stuff like this, that's easy because that's just stepping down. Those are just stepwise motion, but like right here, I might be thinking that's E minor. Just with a passing tone, neighbor tone, neighbor tone, D major, again, or I could just think stepwise motion, stepwise motion, so skip, stepwise, skip, stepwise, okay, 
so I'm grouping things into chords in my mind, okay? And how did I know how to do those dynamics on the first reading? First of all, they weren't really that refined, but things that I noticed right off the bat in, in bar nine. Okay, I see the exact same figure, it's a seventh chord, so E7, resolving to A, which is, makes sense, dominant to tonic. D7, resolving to what key would it be? G major, okay? And what I do is when I see descending sequences, usually I diminuendo, so. And so far as articulation, um, it'll come with experience and time, but um, things. I'm just tempted to boom, 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 boom. I think that sounds good. You could totally do legato. Sounds just as good. It's just personal preference. like a suspension. I mean, it's not really suspended from the last measure. It's played again, but but it's tension, resolution, dissonance, seventh to a sixth. So that's how I'm knowing how to do these shapes, okay? So all of these things that I'm going over are ways of organizing it in your mind, and it just takes practice. I wouldn't take the whole 72 bars if you're just a beginner at this. I would take a line, and I would play through about three to five times. A lot of people argue with me about that. And I've received a lot of emails. How do I get better at sight reading? I say, take a small section, do it hands together in a slow tempo, and then do it three to five times. They say, it's not sight reading after the first time. It is. You're still learning how to sight read it. And as you establish those connections in your mind by doing it three to five times, you're going to make connections that's going to help you, that are, that are gonna help you in the future to say, oh yeah, like you, you may not think, oh yeah, back when I was playing Haydn, Sonata, you know, Hoboken, whatever, you're gonna just be remembering, oh yeah, I grouped it like this in my mind. That's why people who are vocal accompanists can read like four part harmony, or they can read, if they're really good, they can read like a whole orchestral score. I have no idea how they do that. It would just take a lot of practice, but my friend who was a vocal accompanist, he said, you know, I. I started doing that. Um, he's an amazing sight reader, way better than I am. And uh, he said, I just started to accompany so much and I started to kind of see, okay, with my tenor, I've got to transpose it down an octave. And he just kind of started to see all those things and be able to group them and organize them. That's the hardest part about sight reading is learning how to organize stuff in your mind. If you don't have a grasp on your notes, you ought to start there. But after you've got to a certain point, that's why this video is called advanced sight reading, you want to start learning how to organize it. Okay, now, this is presto. So just for the heck of it, let's try it presto, all 72 bars. You might get caught up in fingering, that, and that was actually pretty dang rough, but um, again, we were going presto, and for half of that, that was my first time reading it. 
You might think, I don't know how you figure out that fingering. That comes from lots of years of experience playing different things, teaching a lot, writing in fingerings. So if you know that's your G major chord, you're gonna know the fingering. But if you're just, if you don't have your scales down and you wanna get super advanced at sight reading, that's a problem. If you don't have your arpeggios down, you wanna develop skills simultaneously in order to help your sight reading get better. So I know there was just a few tips presented in this video, you know, organizing things, um, playing three to five times, playing it slowly first. And you can check out my other sight reading video if you want more tips on just a more basic level of sight reading. But I think that's the biggest thing you want to remember. Organizing it in your mind in a specific way will help you more than just reading through the notes or reading intervals only. Start As you get more advanced, you want to start seeing bigger clumps of music and you can start looking ahead. Um, that's one of my problems. Sometimes I'm only looking two or three notes ahead Whereas the people who are amazing sight readers are looking like 10 steps ahead, you know, like 10 notes ahead or all the way to the next measure. You don't want to get too much beyond that, I would think. So if any of you have any questions, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Couple of quick announcements. My Facebook page is fixed. Uh, so if you just click on the link below, you can join me there on Facebook with new announcements. Also, my wife, Lindsay and I, um, she also has her doctorate in piano performance. We just released our very first duo album. It's a meditation CD. It's a two disc. Um, you get narrations and music on one and then just music on the other. Uh, beloved pieces. I mean, these are some of the highlights in all of piano music. So you can check out uh, the CD below. I'll also link it down there. Thank you so much for your support. Have a wonderful week.